So, here we are with another controversial video, but after some recent experiences watching anime, I felt that this was a topic worth exploring and voicing some of the concerns and frustrations that I have run into recently. And while I would like to say that I'm all for supporting the industry and doing things legally, my views on that are a bit more complicated, though I've already talked about that in another video. Anime fans want to watch anime in the highest quality they can, with as little of a cost as possible, and in the most convenient way possible. So, let's look at the most common ways people watch anime. There are four main ways I can think of, though I guess there are a couple others, but we're going to ignore them for this video. You can buy them on DVD or Blu-ray, you can stream them legally through sites like Crunchyroll, you can stream them illegally through other sites, and lastly, you can torrent them. So, let's go through these. First, you can buy the show. While here you do get the best quality, the cost can be quite prohibitive, especially if you do not know if you'll like an anime before you actually try it. With the exception of old anime on sale, anime typically costs like $40 to $50 for a series from Funimation, if not more for longer shows, and other licensors tend to be even more expensive. And while I do like collecting the anime I really like, I'm not going to buy an anime before I've had a chance to try it. And I'd say that a vast majority of anime I do try, I just don't think are worth the money even if I think they're okay. So that leaves three options left. Legal streaming, illegal streaming, and torrents. If I was someone who is all about supporting the industry, I would say you should always do the first one and pretend the other two don't exist. But I know that's not how people are. At least I'm not. And if you're someone who only watches anime legally, then I commend you. But near the start of the video, I said that people want the best quality and the lowest cost, and torrenting seems to be the winner here, because you know you have good quality since you don't have to stream it and rely on an internet connection. Plus, it's free! But it is very inconvenient because you have to set up a program to torrent it, find a good torrent, often a different torrent for each episode, and then wait a while. Plus, you cannot always find the anime you're looking for unless you go to like those private torrenting sites and that's just too much work to watch an anime. Or at least it is for me. Illegal sites are often a better option to watch anime because you can pretty much find everything through them. And again, like with torrents, it's free. Plus, streaming is very easy. Just go to a website, click play, and you're good. You don't have to download the torrent, take up hard drive space, or just wait for it to download. Maybe wait for it to buffer a little bit. So, illegal streaming is definitely the best option so far. But of course, there is legal streaming as well, which has grown a lot over the past few years, which is great. Most anime fans, I'd say, would prefer the legal options to their legal one, all else being equal, because we want to support the industry that we enjoy so much. But the problem is, in order to get anime fans to watch anime through legal streaming, they have to be able to compete with the illegal sites in both the quality and the cost. For a lot of fans, asking them to pay a subscription to a site isn't a big deal. If you watch an episode of anime a day, I would say that $5 a month for a subscription really isn't that much. While some people don't have any money they can use to pay for their anime, or those just that just refuse to pay because they're cheap, a lot of them are willing to pay a few dollars a month for access to the anime. It's a lot less than buying each individual series, and there isn't a big cost if you don't like something, just a little bit of your time. The issue is when there are so many different sites that have anime and you need a subscription to all of them. There are four main streaming sites, Crunchyroll, Funimation, Amazon, and Netflix, and the cost of all these adds up quickly. There's also High Dive, though I haven't used that much, so I can't really comment on that. While Crunchyroll does have the majority of their anime content available for free, the others don't. And while the cost is getting better, with Amazon having their anime available to anyone with Prime, and Netflix has a vast library of other content, so the odds are good you would have it anyway, plus you have Funimation focusing mainly on dubs for the new shows, so you don't need their site unless you are a big dub fan and can just watch most of their stuff on Crunchyroll. The biggest issue with legal sites, though, I find to be the quality and availability of shows within a reasonable time frame. Because, well, these sites can have some big issues here. While this video is focused mostly on American anime watchers, I know that for those outside of America, options to watch anime are a lot more limited if you want to do it legally. While some of these services may be available outside of America, they have such a smaller selection, it really is hard to justify paying for them. So people go to the illegal options, and I can't really blame them. For example, let's say I was a One Piece fan along with lots of other shows, but Crunchyroll only had One Piece. Would I really pay the $5 a month for just like one episode of anime a week? It's kind of hard for me to say yes to that. But even in America, there are some major issues with legal sites. So let's go through a couple of the common ones that I really have issues with and show why the illegal options are so much better. And yes, I'm going to have to break the great taboo of the anime community by mentioning a certain illegal site by name. But really, if you are that much in the anime community to find my channel, I am almost certain you've already heard of this site. And if not, then well, oh well. 
So the biggest illegal site is the obvious Kiss anime. And love them or hate them, they have earned their reputation. Actually, you know what? I was going to say good things about Kiss anime. I had recorded myself saying good things about the anime. I had edited myself saying good things about Kiss anime. But I had not because I was going to their site to do research for my video and I almost downloaded a virus or something that my antivirus thing stopped and then tried to resolve that like Chrome crash and no, don't use Kiss anime. It is bad. If you want illegal sites, go with Watch Cartoon Online and AnimeFreak.tv. Those two, I have not had issues with those. I can use ad blockers there. But yes, Kiss anime, bad. Don't. Go. This is completely improv. I also have the furnace running, so there's background noise. I don't care. Put this in. I, why am I talking to myself? I don't know. And while I get that there are challenges that legal sites have to overcome that the illegal ones don't, if you can't match the quality of an illegal site, I find it hard to justify giving you money. Take Amazon, for example. They recently got rid of their anime strike service, which lowers the cost to watch anime there, which, yes, a good thing. But they have a lot of issues with the quality of their streams. The video quality is hit or miss on their website, and it's even worse if you try to stream through their apps. So when watching shows that rely on the visual presentation like Land Illustrious, it's ruined if the website doesn't have a player that can convey the visuals properly. And recently I watched Yukiuna is a Hero on Amazon and found it was nearly unwatchable. I was watching season one in the dub, but there are several points in the story where important information is conveyed via written Japanese. But since I had the subs turned off because I was watching the dub, I wasn't getting the translation so I missed out on this information. And yes, I could turn them on, but I also had all the subs for what they were saying too, so that was just distracting. Plus, you had all the translations just in the box at the bottom of the screen, so it's hard to see what the characters were saying versus what was written. So, yeah, hard to follow. So, with all these reasons, why would I watch a show on Amazon that I can get for better quality over on Kiss Anime? And now, Netflix. Overall, I really do like Netflix. High quality player, easy site to navigate, and I like how I can turn on subs when I want to just like screenshot a funny line. Plus they're adding offline viewing which is great if I say I'm traveling on an airplane and want to watch anime but I can't use the internet there. The issue, as others have discussed though, is how slow they are to post most of their anime. I recently watched Children of the Whales which is a great show, it's a Netflix anime, but because they don't have it on their site yet, I had to use illegal options to watch it. And if you want to watch shows weekly, as many in the anime community too, Netflix just doesn't work except for like Violet Evergarden. And I get that they like to wait till they have a dub. That's good, I like their dubs. But they can release shows weekly in the sub and then just release a season or two with a dub a few months later, and I think that'd be fine. Plus, this would be good for them because people would be subscribing to watch shows weekly as opposed to just watching like one or two shows for a month and then unsubscribing. Another issue I have with pretty much all legal sites is the fact that they normally don't provide subtitles for the music, both for things like insert songs and also the openings and endings. Music and anime can have such power, but for me, the power often comes from the lyrics themselves. Music-based anime are all about using songs to say something about the story or the characters. For example, Show by Rock, but it's not exclusive just to them. The openings can also say so much with the lyrics to the song to introduce the show. Children of the Whales is an amazing example here. The opening was just so great at showing what was coming, especially as the show went further along and you more and more understood what the song meant. It's one of my favorite anime openings ever, but I would not have felt that way if I did not know what the lyrics said. I might have watched the opening once or twice and then just skipped it. Now, I am not saying that people should pirate anime, but I am saying that companies need to offer a quality product if they want anime fans to watch their content there. And if your choices are between piracy and a low quality product, or between piracy and no way to watch the show, I can't say that you're wrong for choosing piracy. So yeah, thank you for watching and for waiting until you have heard all my logic before you hit the dislike button. Because I know you are that great of viewers. Seriously though, tell me what you thought about this topic. Is there something I missed here? Let me know. I feel like the video could be a great conversation starter and hopefully it will be. Anyway, thank you for watching and I will see you all next time.